Hello, I am Suzanne Spooner, and this is an official QHHT session segment. Hi everyone, this is Suzanne Spooner, and I wanted to share a little bit of additional information with you about this clip you're about to listen to that I call Magnificent Mary. This woman is just so amazing. When she came to me, the session was a while back. It was back in October of 2015. Um, I booked her just like I would book any client. I believe there is maybe a couple of months wait back at that time. She didn't say anything was going on other than she wanted a session and nothing about health or her life situation at the time. So I just booked her as a regular client. When she came into her session that day, back in October of 2015, she um, shared with me that the doctors had given her three to six months to live. Um, she was in hospice care. They could do nothing else for her. And at that point of the day of her session, she was at the six month, two week mark, two weeks past what they told her that she would live. Now, when she told me that, I said, oh my gosh, Mary, you could have you could have told me, you know, ahead of this, and I would have tried to have gotten you in sooner. But she says, no, this is this is how I want it to be. I wanted to see if I could make it long enough to get to you. Wow, that tells you just a little bit about this woman's determination. She's amazing. So in a nutshell, when she came in, she had about eight pages um, on this purple stationery of health issues. This, this was obviously incredibly serious. Not that she just had one life-threatening issue. She had quite a few things going on. Um, most serious was that she had a ballooning ascending aorta. Um, she was too sick to have that operated on. Uh, so that was the most dire of her health situations. She had already had an ballooning descending aorta, which had been operated on, seemed to be doing okay. She was a medical mystery at this point. She'd had so many health issues on, on top of this heart issue that the doctors um, were, I mean, teams of doctors this woman had. And uh, I believe they were even studying her at that point because she had lived so much longer with her conditions um, than would have been expected of anybody. So this is just an amazing session. So what we find out as we're talking, what I find out as we're talking, is that she's had a very difficult marriage, um, childhood even. But the marriage was really the focal point. And she, at that point, had uh, separated from her husband. There had been abuse, um, a lot of pain, uh, a lot. And... Although when she gets done telling me the story of what she has lived through, um, she says, you know, I love him. I can't help but love him, even though he's treated me so badly. So, you know, again, what character, you know, what, what compassion to be able to find that love in somebody that had hurt you so bad. Amazing woman. So those are the things that we're going into the session with. Then... What you don't hear on this recording um, are her past lives. I start this up right as we're beginning into the high self or what she likes to refer to as the high council. Um, so I just want to tell you a little bit of the past lives because she'll be referring to this in the session. Uh, she came into a life where she was married to the king of a clan. Um, she says she wasn't quite a queen, but married to the king. And uh, he's a wonderful man. He's got great character, um, great integrity, takes care of his clan very well. He gets killed by a bear um, and she avenges his death by killing the bear. Um, it's an amazing story. So then I bring her over to the spirit side to see, you know, if there's some information there that we can gather. And sure enough, she's reunited with that husband and he is working in a grand library, uh, writing on scrolls and uh, writing particular information about people's lives on these scrolls. She's there, she doesn't quite understand what he does, but she's there to learn 
what uh, he is doing. He's like her teacher. So what we find out is that that king and the man that was writing in the scrolls is the current husband who is behaving very poorly in this lifetime, um, not taking care of her, certainly not taking care of himself, their family. So he's having a whole different um, experience in this lifetime, yet she's still at this point devoted to him and you know, is hoping to make things work. Um, so that's where we go into this clip that you're gonna hear, um, where we start in with her high council and the tying in of, um, of all of this information that she came into the session with. Oh my goodness. This body scan was magnificent. And you'll hear that even the High Council um, had to bring in some material, we'll call it, from another planet to help heal her body. Now, again, she's in hospice care and there was so much work to do on her body. It was amazing, but her High Council was so efficient and just kept giving me more and more and more information about what they're doing. I'm, I'm releasing this clip now um, for a few reasons. Uh, before this, because her life was kind of ebbing and flowing in and out of this marriage for a while, it just didn't seem appropriate. She had a lot of personal things that she was working through. Um, we stayed in contact, we're friends, I love her. And uh, recently, it just came back to my heart's attention that this would be such an inspiring clip to release to others who may be struggling with what seems like insurmountable health issues and life issues. I contacted Mary and she gave me an amazing update. She is doing so well. Um, her health has improved greatly. And at the end of this clip, I'm going to put her update that she gave me. You've got to read it. It is astounding. So from, from hospice care to complete health and well-being, um, that's what this magnificent Mary has given herself via, in, in part, to her amazing, astounding QHHT session. So I hope you enjoy every minute of this as much as, as I did and um, send a lot of love to Mary and um, to others who are having this big struggle to either stay here on the planet or not. Um, and know that there is always hope and there is always ways of turning your life situations around for the better. Um, I will tell you this, Mary, since uh, her session has become a grandmother, she's got a beautiful grandchild. And, um, and lots of good new things happening in our life. So way to go, Mary. We love you. And we, Mary and I both hope that you enjoy this journey through her session. Thank you very much. I know that the High Council could have shown Mary many different lifetimes to see today. You chose to bring forward the life where she was in the clan, married to the king, why was it important for her to see that life? This was very important for her to see that she chose the right man to be with. It was the right decision. There were many lessons to learn What lessons she, did she learn? She learned. She learned the meaning of our lives here on Earth. You always ask, why? Why did I come here? What's my purpose? The meaning of life. This is the meaning of life. Love never dies.
Does she even have... though someone has done wrong? Even though she tried so hard. This is the meaning of life is love. No matter what, love never dies and love can heal all. The sickest person, even if it's mental or physical, spiritual, love heals all. So how does that life relate to her current life? Even though they were separated, even though he died, they still loved each other. Even though the veil, and it kept them apart. She still felt his love, his love, and he still felt hers. Her truth of staying committed to her soulmate taught her that Even when you're parted in the physical world, you can see the spiritual world, even if it's only in your dreams. Her heart is broken. Her heart is broken in this life from the man she loves. Death from a broken heart is real. She knows that. But she's fighting this. She's fighting this death she does not want yet. What do you want her to know about that? Her life isn't over. Her life is just beginning. She has so much work to do. Tell her about the work that she has still to do. She's the proof. We must show them the medical records. After she is healed, there is the proof. Where there is life, there is love and hope. She will stand and tell them, this is how it was, and now I'm healed. She will say, this is the miracle. This is the miracle. This is the proof that it can be. She's afraid of this path. She wants to crawl in a little ball and hide. She can't do that. She has to stand up and be brave and courageous like when she killed the bear. She will find it. 
This soul is strong and she will have the proof that even miracles happen, Perfect. even in our world, even now. These miracles happen. Well, as you know, she came into this session with a list of questions that she would like to have answered, a lot of those dealing with her physical health. Would it be okay to start in on that list? Yes, no, it's good. Okay, we expect full and complete healing of the body during the session. We'd like to do a body scan and we want to know where you're working and what you're doing and why it originated. Shall we start at the top? That sounds great. Nothing in the brain. No. Brain is good? Yes. Okay. Where are you moving on to now? Now the eyes. Okay. Oh, yes. This must be healed. And what's going on with the eyes? The eyes are clouding over. She will lose her sight. Why do the eyes cloud over? What's behind that? The cataracts are growing fast. We need to heal that now. Okay. And what's the root cause of the cataract, though? So why is it affecting her? Her eyes were put out in a life. This is carried over from another life. Okay. And tell us what you're doing to heal them. We will dissolve these now. Perfect. And what will she notice after the session because of that? Much clearer eyesight. She was aware of the clouding on the edges creeping in towards the sight. She needs the sight so that she can teach. We will clear these. And anything else going on with the eyes besides the cataracts? H is changing the sight. Should we heal that now? Sure, absolutely. We want her in tip-top shape so she can get her work done that she's meant to do. Okay. We want her seeing very clearly what her path needs to be and what she needs to be doing to help herself in her highest and greatest way. So we want those eyes perfect. Yeah. Yes, we are dissolving the, con the cataracts. And the vision will improve slowly. The cataracts, she will notice a difference immediately. Good. What will she notice? She will notice the sight at the side of the eyes. Peripheral fish, vision. <sighs> and where else in the body could use assistance? This thyroid uh, must be fixed. And what's going this, on with the thyroid? It is functioning too slow. It's causing her not pain, but a sluggishness of the body. Okay. This will be healed. And how will she feel different because of that? She will have the energy she needs to complete the work here that she was sent here to do. Perfect. And what else do you see could use some assistance in healing? Yes, the heart. Okay, 
let's talk about the heart. She's got lots of stuff going on there. Yes. This is head surgery. This is head surgery. This one of the valves has not been repaired correctly. We need to fix that. Okay, so what are you doing for her? The valve will not close properly. The valve is open in a fixed position. Now the valve will close properly. The heart must function at the highest level it can. The other part connected to the heart, this needs much work. We are repairing this part of the heart. Wrapping the weak points. This will be even stronger than the surgery that she had performed. Mm -hmm. This will not fail in this lifetime. Perfect. And what are you doing now for her? We are looking at the size of the heart. The heart is enlarged. But well, we've decided that that is okay. Let's leave that alone. And why is that okay? This woman literally has a large heart and has capacity to love many, to care for many, and to heal many. Her heart is large for that reason. She takes everything to heart. <laughs> so we will leave the heart at the size it is. Anything else repairing on the heart? Cholesterol. These tests. <sighs> Doctors. The numbers are high on the cholesterol. It doesn't mean that she's going to have a heart attack or a stroke or anything like that. They're so concerned with the numbers. Most of the medication she's on for her body once the body is healed, she will no longer need this medicine. But we will let her know when it is okay to limit or reduce the dosage. Perfect. There's so much dosage of medicine, it's making her tired all the time. The speed of the heart tends to be too fast, but they have done the complete opposite and made it too slow. They made it too slow and she can't, she can't do what she needs to do. We will correct this. Okay. And how will she feel after the session because of that correction? After the heart rate is controlled, she can cut back on the medicine that is lowering the heart rate. And she will have more energy to exercise and lose the weight that she needs to lose. This
Yes. This has been causing her the pain. We cannot tell her not to love less. She won't do it. We cannot tell her not to love less. Her heart is big to love many. She would give part of her life to heal because she knows what it's like to be so limited. We cannot ask her to make the heart smaller. The heart will be fixed to be adequate enough for her to do the job that she was sent here to do. And what about the ballooning of the ascending aorta? We're wrapping that. It's a special wrap. Tell us about it. This has been woven on special looms. Mm -hmm. This will never tear. We are also wrapping the previously operated on descending aorta mm -hmm. with this fabric. Tell us about the, why is the fabric so special from these looms? This is a special material. This material comes from a different planet some people here have needed this for a long time. And we have told them now that is the time that we are going to make this available to certain people. Some of these people will have important jobs on earth in the coming years. And we must make sure that this is the fabric that was made on the golden looms. It is stronger than steel, lighter than air. Mm -hmm. Nothing can penetrate this. Not from the inside, not from the outside. Even if a knife was put into this and touched this, the knife would break. Oh my goodness. Okay, so all work on the heart is being done to completely heal and repair? Yes. Perfect. The size of the heart will not diminish though. Right, and that's okay, right? Yes. Okay. She wouldn't want it. No. <laughs> So what other areas of the body need to have full and complete healing? The spine now, from the weight, will be healed. The heart is healed. She can exercise now. Good. She was afraid and was told not to exercise because the heart could explode. This will not happen now. Slowly, she will regain her strength. And they will point, no, that these miracles and healings are possible. Now is the time. This will be made. To give people hope around the world. That it is our birthright to live in health and not to suffer. This is your birthright when you are sent here. It is Why should the body break down? There is no reason for this. 
she will give hope to the sickest of the sick, that they can be made whole, to live the lives that they dream. The doctors will look at these records for many, many, many years <laughs> and wonder, how did this happen? <laughs> and she is healing herself, isn't she, with your help? Yes. So tell us about the help and repair you're doing with the spine. The spine is weak and degenerate, degenerating, degenerating. This is hereditary from her father's side, a weak spine. What's the root cause of that? What does that really start from? Improper diet in childhood. The spine has already been through the father's side. The spine is weak. But there was malnutrition in younger years. That has caused the degenerative disease of the spine. This can be healed. What are you doing to heal it? We are healing the spine, adding the nutrients that it needed so she can stand tall, that they might see her. This will be healed. It will take a little time. It has been in place for some time. Mm -hmm. Her, it is hurting her. What? Oh. Can we take the discomfort away for her? Yes. I want her to be comfortable while all this healing is going on on her behalf. Yes. This yeah, This is hurting her so much. We will take this away from her and the pain. She did the best she could with what she was given in childhood when the bones were forming. And we will bring the nutrients that she needs to the spine. Chiropractic work may be required to align the spine for alignment only, the bones will be healed over time. Perfect. Thank you. Into the hip area also, and the lower back. This is the same. The nutrients were not given at the correct time, we will send the nutrients there. How will they react when they receive the nutrients? The bones regenerate and become strong. I bet they feel pretty happy about that. Yes. Her back will be strong again. It has bothered her for many, many years. She did not complain. No one knew all the pain. But she learned many things from this pain. She learned humility. And the quietness of prayer. 
and empathy. Everyone deserves to receive others' empathy. They live their lives healthy in a daze. This will not be allowed to continue. And where else in the body is requesting full and complete healing? The stomach has held many sorrows. Tell her where that comes from. What are, where does it originate from? This is from a past life. She would not tell them where to find the soulmate. They tortured her. The intestines were slowly removed and burned. Oh. What are you doing there to repair and heal that and let go of those memories? This will slowly heal itself, releasing past life, torture and pain. The nodding of the stomach will relax. This is not needed anymore in this life. It taught her though, all of these pains and chronic conditions have taught her many, many things. But she doesn't need, to, she's learned those lessons, right? So it's time now to have a healthy body and a good life. Yes, now the body will be strong. Right. And so is that why she was having stomach problems at such a young age in this life? Yes, this pain and elimination problems have been carried over from the previous life when she would not, under any circumstances, tell them where the soulmate was hidden. And in that life, why did the soulmate go into hiding? The soulmate was trying to free people of oppression. She gave herself up so that he could continue the work that he was supposed to do. He saved many lives. They saved many lives together in that life. He was there and watched while well, they did this to her. This broke his heart. But he knew that he had to continue his work to save so many. And what about the diabetes? Where does that, what's the source of that? Where does that come from? The diabetes is hereditary. From the mother's side. The father has it too. But this was not inherited from the father. This has been turning the pain in on itself of the soulmate's alcoholism. So the soulmate's alcoholism is part of the root cause of the current life's diabetes? Yes. Okay. She chose to have the sickness brought on her instead of seeing him suffer. 
So she's carrying his illness to a degree? Yes. We're trying to talk to her to let this go. This must go. Why is this woman so stubborn? If she lets it go, how will it change her life? She will be healthy. He will not. He has never been sick or felt pain. She has taken the pain away from him. It is now the soulmate's turn. She's fighting us. But he learns his lessons too, right? By accepting his responsibility? No. No. She did not agree to that. Let it be put on me. I'm stronger. This was in the soul contract, and we told her. By taking all of his pain away, he will not learn the lessons that he needs to learn. Please let him learn the lessons in another way. Please don't let him be sick. No, this has continued long enough. <sighs> so she's actually helping him by allowing him to learn his own lessons. No, she is blocking the lessons that he needs to learn and she is going to let this go. He is going to become very sick. She has pulled every sickness away from this. The soulmate must learn. This cannot continue. The soulmate must learn and be responsible for his own actions. She cannot pull the actions. No. No. Oh. She doesn't want to see him hurt. She would do anything. <sighs> He's going to be very sick, and it's going to hurt her heart. She will feel the pain, but she will never have the heart problems that she current, ha currently has that has been causing so much trouble. She is denying his soul lessons that it needs to learn. She understands. No matter what he has done to her, she will go to him in his need. When the sickness comes, she will go to him. But we cannot allow her to take these pains any longer due to his inaction and unwillingness to accept the responsibility of those actions. In the end, the soulmate will learn what true love and devotion is. The only one that she won't be able to help is the one that she loves. So that's a change in what she's been able to do before then. Yes, yeah, she has absorbed all of the actions and consequences for the soulmate. Many lifetimes worth The soul cannot carry all of this and do the job that it was meant to do here. The only person she cannot help is the soulmate. He will not be healed and he will know pain. She's fighting us still 
This is not stubbornness. This is love. She would sacrifice her body for love. We will be not just trying to block us from talking. Mm, don't do that. Let them come through. That's very important. She doesn't want to see this person hurt. I'm stronger. I can take it, she says. No. You're telling her no. You are no longer to absorb this pain. She doesn't like it, but she understands. It is for the ultimate good of the soul, her soulmate. All of the pain in this body has no more reason to limit the life. She has done no wrong. She loves so deeply, she would gladly take on the pain. And while that is admirable, we cannot no, no longer allow this. Too few years of happiness and joy were felt by this body. Too few. This is the beginning of a new life. The stomach will slowly heal. Working down the solar plexus Oh, why is this so sensitive? That's where her power is, right? Yes, it's very tender in this region. She has felt the times that we have sent extra for her to get through the, the many trials that she has borne. She wanted more children. That was not possible. No. The uterus was too weak to carry any more children. Very tied to the solar plexus. Explain to us why that connection and, and why the solar plexus is so tender. She connects with the heart, but is also connected to the soulmate through the solar plexus, giving up giving up the power to override his wishes. Pulling back the power. It was not able to go free and in containing it has made this area very sensitive Over the years, we have sent power bursts into this region. 
And she has felt the pull. We are telling her now to let this area glow. Let it glow. She's afraid of the power. They would, she's afraid that they will think that she is no longer feminine. She's fighting. The soul is so feminine. She has been a man several times in different lifetimes. In times of war. Anytime she has, anytime that she has reincarnated with the soulmate, she has chosen to be the female. In the times that they did not reincarnate together, very few, very few times. She thinks that they will not see her fem as female if she lets out too much power. The power to heal. The power. We're trying to tell her that it's coming through her. It's not from her. They will not think that she is less feminine. She's saying they will fear her. No. No. You can still stand up and be powerful. You are still feminine. You can still stand up and be powerful. You must explain to the ones that ask. This power has not come through me. I'm just fighting us. We're trying to tell her that. No. <sighs> She wants to be seen as soft and motherly and loving. We're trying to tell her that she is all those things and so much more. We want to use her to spread the word that these healings are possible. She will be questioned many times. And she will say, but I have proof. The medical records will be the proof. These will be amazing. And who will she be sharing that information with? Anyone who will listen. This voice will be heard around the world. There is no need to suffer. What could you do if you no longer suffered? Mm -hmm. What could you do for others? How would you help others if you were no longer suffering? And the empathy that you felt through the lessons learned in suffering and pain. You know what it felt like. And now you will heal others so that they may heal others and they may heal others. Only through this will there be peace mm -hmm. and the acceptance of miracles. 
anywhere else in the body that is asking for complete and total healing? All the hips. She's afraid of this. Moving forward. Mm -hmm. But this will happen. This is not a big thing. We are working on it. Not the bones, as in the back. This is more of a muscular. This will strengthen as she exercises and grow strong. This body will be strong again, able to deliver the words that the whole world is waiting for. And anywhere else? What about skin her? condition on the legs? What is this? No, the she believed in the elements. Her ability to heal. They were scared. They were scared that she could heal. They thought she was a witch. She could have healed them, but they burned her. This is the fear of the courtroom, mm -hmm. of being judged, the feminine aspect of the witch. This atrocity has had much fear brought into this lifetime. And that results on, as a skin condition on the legs? The whole body, the legs are worse. This is no longer needed. This was brought in from another life. This can be healed. Mm -hmm. What about the breast infections that she's had? The breast was cut off before the burning. The left breast. They said They said the devil suckled this breast. This can be healed. This is from another life, the life where she was burned at the stake. She could have healed so many wretches. So you're removing that memory and healing that breast? Yes, we are doing this now. Perfect. And she wonders, why is she highly sensitive to the weather, to heat, humidity, damp, and cold? She hardly goes outside. She connects and finds joy in the weather and the seasons. It's very connected to the changing of the seasons and she finds joy and happiness in this. And she was denying herself this joy and happiness. What do you want her to know about that? Do not fear being joyful. Do not fear the happiness. You belong in the sun, girl. <laughs> you belong in the sun. Go outside 
and sit in the sun and absorb the rays. Let them heal you. And when the leaves turn the colors, she loves this and it will bring her joy. And she's been told that all of her ailments, her diseases could be due to a connective tissue disorder that's genetic. You've beautifully described really what the true source of all these are, but is there anything you'd like to add to that? Yes, you are correct. These have been, these have been from so many lifetimes, many, many, many lifetimes. There is no genetic disorder. Your children will not pass this on. We are healing anything within them at this time, too. Perfect. And um, she says she's very sensitive around people and feels that she's a possible empath. What is important for her to know about that? She needs to learn to let this flow. She's afraid she will be judged if she lets it known that she can feel this. There will be no more judging. This is the time that the healers of the world have been waiting for. There will be much healing on this earth. There are many sources And she, although we've talked a lot about her soulmate um, in the form of Joseph, her husband in this life, please explain to her clearly why he has done so many things that have hurt her and cut her off um, when, in fact, they are these soulmates. What is the reason behind his actions in this life? A soulmate knows that she has been blocking the pain that should have been his. The soulmate knows that the only way to grow is through feeling this pain. He knows that she will not be able to heal him. He will suffer greatly. There will be no curing of these as much anger in him. She will go to him when he is sick. No matter what, she will be there for him. At that time, will he see how she is healing and is in a healthier and better place? Yes. He knows it's his time now to go through these things. He has had to push her away out of his life so that he can feel the soul needs. So his soul needs to learn. The soulmate pushed her away to stop absorbing the conditions. He will become very ill. This is going to be painful for her to watch. But this soul cannot advance unless he feels the pain. And he will learn the meaning of this life. And she's told him so many times. He has to live through that and know the sacrifice she made for him. He will die with her holding his hand.
And you talked about some of her fears about the courtroom, but she says she also has fears of poverty and losing her balance. She's actually not been stable at times standing up. What is most important for her to understand about the fears that she carries? The poverty has come from this lifetime and others. The balance, well, the balance is with the soulmate. She has not allowed the soulmate to take on his responsibilities and his actions and so felt out of balance for taking on too many top-heavy. Once this is balanced, the soulmate is allowed to feel and experience what he needs to for his soul to advance. She will feel steadier on her feet, and we will be telling her that in her dreams. What about her fear of poverty that she experiences as a young child and now currently while he holds control over her finances? This will not continue. She will be able to take care of herself, no longer live in the fear of poverty for her or her children. What will change in order for her to move away from that? She will become a speaker for all who do the work of healing. You are meant to mentor this soul. I am? She searched a long time to find you. Yes. Who was searching and searching. She thought a long time before she contacted you. She wanted to make the right choice. Mm -hmm. She wants to do everything perfectly. She's so afraid to make a mistake. She wants only the best to teach her. She's almost paralyzed by not making the right choice. And so she thinks and thinks about the choices that she makes until the connection is made that she can trust. That connection was made through the numbers, the current address, <laughs> the teacher, you will become that teacher. Oh, I'd be honored to. I would be honored to. What about her um, fear of water? This is a past life trauma. This was a drowning. The soulmate was not with her at the time. She was with the soulmate, but they went different ways and she drowned. On April 14th, 1912, Yes, just as she thought, she drowned. 
with the baby in her stomach. She wanted to save the baby for the soulmate to have a piece of her to remember. But that was not to be. She says that there is a Mary Phyllis that was pregnant on the Titanic. Is there a connection there? That was her. The name is the connection. Not a common name. So that it would ring the bell of knowledge. We will try to help her with the fears that she has. Her life a lot, wouldn't it, if she didn't have those to be contending with? Lightening of the body, lightening of the soul. She's always trying to help, and when she can't, she feels it's her fault. She wants to take away everyone's pain and have them feel the love that she could feel. The but soul is light, still has a childlike demeanor. These lessons have been hard to carry and heavy. These will be lifted She talks about, though, uh, being so empathetic towards feeling the pain from people and animals that it actually shuts her down. So how can she have a better balance being sensitive to people but not letting it be debilitating to her herself? First of all, this soul has been caring so much from the soulmate that she has been, been blocking her ability to help others, concentrating solely on the, on the soulmate so he can avoid the pain. With this lifted, and with her agreement for us to lift this away from her, she will be able to help others and will find the right balance so that she does not have to take on the suffering of others only to relieve it. She does not have to suffer their pains to heal them. And she talks about being able to see past loved ones, people, and animals. What's important for her to know about that? Don't block it. Pain comes from the blocking. She feels much peace when she can see them. A little fear. There's the fear. Lift the fear. We will take this away now. This is no longer serving. She was persecuted for being able to see things other could not. This will be lifted. She's fighting us again. Okay. 
due to the faith where she, that she was brought up in, this was looked down upon and was told that this was devil's work. And we know that is not true. And we will communicate this in dreams to her. To see the souls that bring her peace, even for others, especially the animals. Can you explain to her why she sees diamond-shaped windows in dreams? This is from a past life during World War II. She grew up in France in a beautiful home. These are the windows in the playroom where she played and felt safe. This is the lifetime during which she became the nun and saved many, many children. She incarnated with the soulmate The soulmate was a Nazi and killed many children, but she would not believe this until she saw it with her own eyes. This was a hard lesson for the soul to see. The innocent children she saved loved her very much. She kept them safe while they were searching for them, sang them songs, and risked her life many times. She gave them her food. There is some connection here with the status of the spine the milk that she received was given to the children she would not drink it they would tell her sister drink the milk it makes you strong and she said no no little ones you drink it I'm not thirsty and they grew strong their descendants still live in Israel today. Many, many descendants. Is there any information about herself as that nun that she could look up, perhaps? Yes. Her town outside of Paris. Louis me done too. Louis me bantu. What what was that that you just said? This is a tiny town. Very small. The Nazis took over the main house that was her home. Where she grew up. They he soulmate So it's a very difficult life. She denied the love of the soulmate to save the children. What was her name in that life? What was she called? Mary.
The town was named for her father. And the name of that town again? Atul. This is, this will be found. She will recognize the chateau where she grew up. Tell her to look for the pictures. We will tell her to look for the pictures. What pictures? Of the chateau. She will find the chateau in a picture and recognize it. Was there a name for the chateau at that time? La petite la petite de petite La petite Name for the father. The Nazis killed the father and the mother, the rest of the family. They were hiding Jewish children in the basement. The soulmate killed them. Mm. Yes, she knows this. Did she live through that? Yes. Yes, she became an old woman. And the children that she saved and their children came to see her. And explain to her about her deep love and connection to the animals. This soul usually works alongside of her soulmate on the other side. But she also takes care of the animals and loves this. And the soulmate is looking for her. He knows where to find her in the fields with the animals. She is the keeper of the animals. And in her experience since he kicked her out of their house what was that meant to teach her what is she supposed to get from that traumatic event to be strong to stand on her own two feet to have faith in herself to do the work that she was sent here to do This was the only way that she would leave him. He had to forcibly throw her out to break the connection of her taking on his pain. It had to be this dramatic. He feels the pain of their separation but knows he has to learn these lessons, the consequences of the drinking and the anger. The body of the soulmate She's blocking us from saying this. The body of the soulmate will find out that he has cancer and his pancreas. 
she cannot heal this. Would there be a time when he would be open to her talking to him about what she's learned today about their connection? No, he doesn't want to hear it. No. Yeah, it's closed off. Part of his heart. Why is his connection so deep with that farm family down the way? The eagle? No, the family? The eagle feels oh. that it deserves the recognition and the popularity of the family name. He is connecting with them purely through ego. He knows the mistakes that he has made, but is not willing to admit to this, the wrongs. He wanted to make her find him disgusting to her. He wanted to make her believe the betrayals were true so that she would not be with him again. In this lifetime? Yes. This is her last lifetime here. Not his. She will not reincarnate again here. So tell her very, very clearly again what she is here to do and what will be occurring uh, as a benefit of the healing that she's received here today. She has been searching for this for many, many years. Her journey she thought was to be a mother and faithful wife. But it is also to tell the world of the healing that is possible. And each person comes into this life with the means to heal themselves. This will facilitate many, many healings. They will ask her to prove that she has been healed. All the tests that she has had show without a doubt the diseases which she suffered from When the tests are redone, this will show that miracles can happen even in this time, even in this world. It's going to take a while for her to feel the full benefits of this healing about a year, she will have her strength back 
and be able to do the work that she was sent here to do. The barb will be the soulmate suffering that she cannot bring healing to. And so that time frame the doctors gave her of 6 to 12 months, which she's already passed, what should she know about that? She has been waiting and holding on and conserving her energy to arrive at this healing. It was very close, but as we have said, we have sent for special material that was woven and is indestructible. This will heal the heart, which was the main disease that could have taken her life. She can serve the energy so she could get here for the healing. And it will be so. And what can she do during this time of healing to help support her body? She still must rest for a while to allow us to finish healing what we can heal and also to let go of the past lives and the memories of those sufferings. It will be about a year. This time next year, she will have the energy she needs to start getting strong through exercise and proper diet. What type of exercise is best for her body? Any type of natural exercise will enhance her strength. Natural exercise is, we mean, not strenuous. Walking is good. Being out with her children. She will be allowed to go see the animals that she misses. He will relent soon. She draws much joy and energy from the horses that she is missing so much. Just walking with them and training them. Natural exercise is the best for this body. She won't need to be in a gym or an indoor. The sensitivity to the weather will continue to see says the body heals. The body was under such strain from all the diseases and suffering, it could not handle anything else. Change in weather, a sick person, the littlest thing. The body was doing everything it could just to live. How does the body feel now after having this session?
because these afflictions have been carried so long. She is tired and will be a little sore, but these will slowly diminish. This body will be strong again. She has been hoping and praying for this. And as she is away from the soulmate, even more so, because she is not taking on his pain and suffering. It was too much for this body to bear. And she clearly understands now that she has to give him his time to learn from his own lessons and his body issues. Yes, she cannot shield him anymore. She understands this. Although she still will fight it and not be happy about it. She actually serves him by letting him learn his lessons, though. Yes. Yes, she knows. She held on so tightly, he had to throw her out. Is there anything that she didn't ask today that you wish she would have? She has doubted that she has seen the other side. She watches on TV. They say that maybe this is just the brain shutting down. This is not so. The near-death experiences that she has witnessed were real and gave her the hope to carry on in this life and also helped her mother to pass through without fear. This is another issue that she will tell out. It was a very unusual experience. And it is not typical of what souls usually experience. She will know for sure that she experienced these things. And the things that she will notice right away that feels better or different are what exactly? The stomach, the heart, the pain of these two will be much noticed. The back will take longer. The skin will heal almost immediately. And with the eyes, also very clear vision, no need for eye surgery. And do you see it being in her best interest to learn how to do this process of QHHT in the future? Yes. She's been searching for this for so long and her journey she thought was at an end because she found this is only just beginning. 
She has many more years to learn and teach and share. And how often do you recommend that she listens to this recording to get the benefit out of it? As often as possible, within the first year. It might be a f every day for a couple weeks and then go to once or twice a week. There may be some weeks that she will need to listen to it more often as some intense healing will occur. She may be sore from these healings and will wonder why, but because the pain has been there for so long, it lingers in the memory. We will try to erase these memories that would be very nice. We want her to have as much comfort in the body as possible as she heals. And in doing that, can you do a lot of the work of the continued healing in her sleep time? Yes. Because we want her to feel like she's got great energy and great movement of the body during her awake time. Yes, we will do as much as we can during the evening rest. The insomnia will cease, deep restful nights, and naps during the day. The work she's going to be doing will be draining, but with resting, people that love her, and of course the animals that she loves so dearly, these will continue to replenish her and give her the hope that she needs to continue. Very good. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Well, it's about time for me to bring her back up. Do you have a final message you would like to give to her? She found the right teacher. to assist her in any way. I come from a very good teacher myself in Dolores, so I'm happy to share the work with her and stay connected and celebrate her successes as she moves through her healing time. So thank you for bringing her to me. Thank you for allowing us to talk. Mm -hmm. We have, have a message okay. for you from Dolores. Oh, okay. And she is very proud of the work that you have done. You have helped so many people. And she will continue to help you with your energy and your light that shines through your eyes. Thank you to Dolores and thank you to Mary for allowing that message to come through. It means more than I can tell you. So thank you and great love back to Dolores, of course, always. We have passed along this message. Very good, thank you. Um, let's see here. When she decided to come for this session, what was it that you hoped that she got from it the most? that these miracles are possible. The hope she has clung to for so long is real. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that. All right. Well, unless you have anything else that you would like to add today, I'll get ready to bring her back up. We're happy with the session. 
thank you for your assistance. Oh, my honor, my pleasure, truly. Let's get her well and happy and having a full and beneficial life, shall we? Yes, together we can. Thank you. Mm, thank you.